Chapter Friday. Today we're going to be looking at Alone by Megan E. Freeman. It is one of the books on the 2022 Lone Star list and it's a novel in verse. So that means the chapters go very quickly. So I'm going to read like the first two or three instead of just one and I hope you enjoy it. Alone. This is not adolescent hyperbole. This is my reality. Alone in this place where I've been surviving on my own for over three years with no one but a big smelly Rottweiler who farts and hogs the covers. You might think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. I'm not just being dramatic like my grandma might say. I figured out by the time I was a teenager I'd be thinking about getting my driver's permit, going to dances, playing varsity soccer and kissing. But instead, I'm thinking about where to find food and fuel and water and whether to use Mountain Dew to force flush the toilet or to drink, even though it's the color of radioactive urine. And it's probably toxic when ingested over long periods of time. Better to be radioactive or dehydrated. These are the questions that plague my daily existence, at least for now, at least until my parents come back. Heaven, bliss, ecstasy, paradise, dreamland. Back when my life was heaven and I had no idea. Shoes off before you come in, mom hollers as I open the kitchen door. I mop today. She wipes orange slop off the baby's face. Honey, I know you have different rules at your dad's, but could you try a little harder to make an effort when you're at our house? Sometimes the way mom talks to me feels like a scratchy shirt tag on the back of my neck. I kick off my tattered silver converse and calculate how much more I need to save before I can special order a custom pair for my 13th birthday. Mom hugs me. Sorry, sweetie. I'm just rushing to get ready to go. So glad you're home. Hands me a mug filled with chopped carrots and celery. I bet you're starving. I squeeze an empty Twinkie wrapper in my pocket. I'll have to remember to throw it away later. Before middle school, I was never even tempted to lie. Lately though, it just seems to make things so much simpler. Mom, are you going out like that? I make my horror obvious. Mom has on the paisley embarrassments that she calls her meditation pants. She always wears something mortifying on to Tuesday night Dharma talks. They all just sit still and learn to breathe like breathing is something you have to learn. Mom does that thing where she pulls my hair to get me to smile. Oh, come on, honey. It's called a sitting meditation. If I wore jeans like yours, I'd lose circulation in my legs. Come to think of it, did your dad see you wearing those when you left this morning? Seriously? My jeans are not even tight. So what if the shape of my cell phone is permanently embossed on one pocket? Sometimes just being in the same room with my mom, even the sound of her voice makes it hard to be a person. Paul's car pulls up. Mom grabs her wallet out of the diaper bag. Thanks for babysitting, sweetie. We should be back early unless they're stopping people at the checkpoints. We'll definitely be home before the curfew. She kisses Trevor, calls to the twins. Hey guys, bedtime at the usual time tonight. No messing around. She signs I love you toward the dining room, blows me a kiss, and is gone. Brothers. Trevor smiles from his high chair, reaches for me. I lean in, pretend to steal his nose. He erupts in belly laughs, smears pureed carrots in my long hair. I pull it into a ponytail with a twist tie. Sigh. I adore my baby brother, but I want to get upstairs, check on the weekend plan. You couldn't pay me enough to eat that, Elliot surprises me. Unnaturally quiet, I never hear him coming. I try to bribe him to feed Trevor. I have another Twinkie in my backpack. In the gluten-free economy of my bizarre family, Twinkies are worth a lot on the stepbrother black market. 
but he's helping James. Science project. Can't be bought. They have one of those freaky twin connections, can read each other's minds. Plus, the fact that James is deaf makes me feel awkward, even after all this time. I know it's not cool to say that, but there it is. I said it anyway. Doesn't help I live half-time with Dad and Jennifer. I used to love the regular breaks from gluten-phobic diets and silent dinner conversations. Until Paul and Mom had Trevor. Now it feels like I'm missing out. I want my own freaky connection with someone who can read my mind. Pocket vibrates. Check on Ashanti's name. 6.55 p.m. Weekend mission is a go. Our weekend plan, or how I got myself into this mess. We are going to lie to our parents and have a secret sleepover. Emma and Ashanti will say they're spending the night at each other's house, and I will tell mom I'm with dad and tell dad I'm with mom. But we will actually sleep over at my grandparents' empty summer apartment. We will make popcorn, stay up super late, watch glamorous old Catherine Hepburn movies, lounge on the king size bed, sleep as long as we'd like. No one nagging us to get up, do the laundry, clean your room, change stinky gross diapers. We are geniuses. Okay, so that's the first few chapters of Alone. Basically, our main character and her friends decide to lie and sneak out and have a secret slumber party. But our main character is the only one who shows up. And the next morning, everybody's gone. The entire town was evacuated in the middle of the night. And she's alone and having to survive on her own. And she faces lots of challenges like finding food and how to stay warm and protect herself from wild animals and looters. But her biggest enemy and her biggest challenge seems to be the loneliness. So read alone to find out what happens if she survives and if she ever finds her parents and where did all the people go. Uh, we'll have several copies at our school library. You should be able to find it at the public library or as always, you can buy your own copy. Happy reading. <laughs>